Formerly home to giants of their time, such as the Wright Brothers, Dunbar, and Patterson, Dayton was a hub of innovation and creativity. What has made Dayton a creative community and, and, and what really set us off on this uh, path, I would suggest that uh, the idea that success breeds success. The first cash register was made here. Society boomed. Downtown was lively. People came to the city in droves. Dayton represented the ideal of the melting pot. There were so many talented people in Dayton, they just sort of gravitated towards each other. Now, the city is forced with looking inward, reflecting on its past and looking towards its uncertain future. Founded in 1796, Dayton's beginnings were far from extraordinary. Not until roughly a century later would Dayton's industrial boom really begin. People will joke that Dayton, Ohio is the biggest small town in America. But as a place of innovation, um, a lot of things started here. Thanks to two different events, Patterson starting National Cash Register, or NCR as it's known today, and the Wright brothers inventing the airplane, Dayton began its rise in the history books. NCR was founded in, in Dayton and was here for, for its entire existence as the headquarters of that company, even though they're worldwide operations. Even though the planes might look different, the fundamental underpinnings of what the Wright brothers develop as they're inventing the world's first successful airplane, the world's first practical airplane, those are things that you still find on the most advanced aircraft in the world. After the Great Flood of 1913 in Dayton, Ohio, NCR financially and materialistically donated to help in the recovery efforts. Dayton soon found itself the land of ideas, becoming the Silicon Valley of the 1900s. At the turn of the century, uh, people who claimed to have a home in Dayton owned something on the order of 14 different patents. Thrust into the national spotlight, Dayton would soon find itself spawning and drawing in businesses like GM, with inventors such as Charles Kettering. Even the U.S. Army took notice, building up what is now Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Yeah, I mean, the base itself, Wright-Patterson, right? Wright, Wright Field, uh, the Wright Brothers, and so uh, the, the birthplace of aviation here in 1903. And so what's been great about Dayton, I think, is the culture hasn't changed. Right here in our backyard, we have one of the largest and most complicated, in terms of missions, most complex Air Force bases in the world. And this is the most powerful and most successful Air Force in the entire world. National Cash Register, General Motors, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, or as the locals call them, NCR, GM, and Wright-Pat. These three giants carried Dayton to its peak of success through jobs and employment. Again, that attracted scientific minds, uh, offered a lot of employment, a lot of good, high-paying employment. If we think about Dayton, Ohio, in the 1950s, even as late as 1960, I would suggest that that is the pinnacle of our industrial might. Alongside these three pillars, the boom of small companies and inventions served as the substructure enabling Dayton to become even more powerful. Mead Corporation, Reynolds and Reynolds, Esther Price, and a delicious snack food, the Cheez-It, are a few of the so-called 1,000 factories that provided the basis and population needed for Dayton to grow. We absolutely have been a, a city of small business for a long time. While creating technology and prosperous businesses, the creativity of innovation flourished through other endeavors, such as in the arts and culture. This helped Dayton to grow by providing the atmosphere and drawing the community together through its various forms. Dayton has some pretty terrific founded arts organizations here. Master of the arts, like the poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar, helped bring a voice to many minorities across the nation at the end of the 19th century. Dunbar was doing something original uh, that had not been done. So in, in all manner of speaking, Dunbar influenced them but also encourage them. With others such as the Schwartz sisters and Virginia Kettering, these influential individuals helped build a rich arts culture for the city of Dayton. And that was due to the fact that everybody had 
a fairly stable economy. So the fact that Dayton, Ohio has a ballet and you know, a professional ballet, a professional opera, and a professional philharmonic is a pretty unusual set of circumstances for a city of this size. The first half of the 20th century for Dayton was historic. With more businesses and people moving to the city, Dayton was the place to be. But as history goes, change can come at any time. With the rise of success from the 1900s to the 1960s, Dayton seemed indestructible. The mid-century brought many new businesses and rich culture to the city. As Dayton continued to grow, the world around Dayton was going through volatile change. The 1960s and 70s are, are absolutely crucial to understanding Dayton. In the mid-1960s, the civil rights movement was peaking in America. Decades of racial discrimination were being exposed, and segregation was taking place all over the country. As Dayton was rapidly expanding, racial tensions soon reached a boiling point. And in 1966, upon the killing of a black man in West Dayton, who was sweeping his front porch, a crowd of over 100 people gathered on West 5th Street. There was so much pent up anger that um, all it needed was a spark. What started as a large mob throwing glass bottles quickly turned into a riot and a violent clash with the police. Where the National Guard literally came in to restore order because it basically was like martial law. It was one of three times in, Ohio, in uh, Dayton's history where martial law was declared. Dayton, like many cities across the country, soon found itself as a divided city. Despite previous decades of prosperity and building a strong community, many Dayton residents felt the need to leave the city. Historians refer to this time as white flight. In the 50s and 60s, you know, you had a lot of, unfortunately, federal programs that were helping to also create race divisions or, you know, the, the whole urban renewal program created so much divide. Urban renewal might have had some, you know, well-intentioned objectives. It ends up doing so much demolition in Dayton. So many areas are just cleared out completely that that spirit of neighborhood and that spirit of community is really um, chopped up and lost. In a federally funded urban renewal effort starting in 1956, the I-75 and US-35 permanently altered travel patterns in the city. What they did was develop these you know, high-speed roadways that were perfect if you are on 35 and you now want to live in Beaver Creek and you want to get to your job in downtown Dayton, it's great. Allowing citizens the ability for faster and easier travel to further distances the downtown area saw a drop in numbers never seen before. In the case of both 35 and 75, but especially in the case of US 35, in order to build the roadway, literally neighborhoods are now cut up. A lot of businesses had to close their doors because they needed the land to build those highways and things. As people were moving out to the suburbs looking for new opportunities, Dayton itself was going through structural changes. You know, your daily life as a young black person pretty much centered around your neighborhood. Once thriving neighborhoods were now altered as segregation and redlining, the practice of denying credit or insurance to those in poor areas, further divided the city. Dayton historically, and even as a child I didn't necessarily realize this, um, not until I got much older, was always one of the most segregated cities in the, in the country. As segregation was impacting much of Dayton, the public schools were going through challenges as well. In 1978, after a plan to help desegregate schools, school officials decided to return to a freedom of choice approach, creating more tension. The whole busing issue really started the um, decline in the city's population. It's one more reason for people that have the wherewithal to leave the city limits of the city of Dayton to leave the city limits of the city of Dayton. A city that once took pride in their innovation and creativeness was now going through change. Change that many people weren't prepared for. What used to be a bustling commercial hotspot began to look more and more barren. Upon the highway's completion in 1976, Dayton experienced one of the largest population drops in its history. 
Since the early 1970s, nearly 15,000 manufacturing jobs disappeared at NCR alone. Automobile plants cut payrolls as the economy restructured and the Rust Belt transitioned from mechanical to automated. We saw the, you know, devolution of manufacturing. And as they start cutting back, people that had seniority got to stay and the people that didn't were the ones that were cut back. In the case of National Cash Register Company, in 1970, they have somewhere almost around 25,000 employees in Dayton. By 1980, they're down to about 5,000. As companies left and took the jobs with them, the city of Dayton began its slow decay. So when those got replaced or got moved to other parts of the world, it, it was gut punch at times. As the 80s neared its end, the other major anchor in the city, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, was also concerned with its future. When I was governor, um, there was a national uh, base closing commission called the BRAC process. With the Cold War ending in the early 90s, the federal government began closing now unneeded bases in a process known as base realignment and closure, commonly referred to as BRAC. Wright-Patterson being that core of the community where it's always been a reliable source of uh, not just employment, but pride for the area. It would be a 50-year recovery if you lost, lost Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. I mean, literally, I would, I would say it'd take it 50 years to recover. Daytonians fought hard to save such an important pillar to the community. As more than 350 installations closed nationwide, Wright Pat not only survived, but grew, giving the city and its citizens a glimpse of hope for its future. I was so impressed with how the Dayton community rallied together uh, to present the best case for Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Wright-Pat's importance to the city and country was solidified in 1995 when it hosted the negotiations of the Dayton Peace Accords, ending the Bosnian War. The prestige it brought to this area was just insane. As Wright-Pat survived, Daytonians' hope and optimism grew, and the community came together in efforts to revitalize the city. In the late 90s, right around 99-2000, um, the minor league baseball stadium was built. And that was kind of the first sign or shift in momentum in the downtown area. The opening of the Schuster Center, that is a huge benefit to this, to this area. To see this pendulum coming back because of the stick to that so many people have, you know, kept at it, trying to push forward with attracting the investment and the right kinds of investments. The early 2000s were a time of optimism for Dayton. However, the Great Recession would lead to more grim times for the city. General Motors closed its plant in Moraine, and not long after, NCR officially cut ties with the city of Dayton, leaving its former home in shambles. When the jobs weren't here, you gotta go and take care of your family, and I mean, just like I did, I left for seven, eight years to get other employment. We just saw the, the job hits coming from everywhere. You know, NCR left, GM left. It was sort of like the perfect storm. With two of the pillars gone, Dayton was shattered. As newly unemployed citizens struggled to find jobs in Dayton, the community found itself empty. You talk to the people that are living in those neighborhoods, some of them feel really pretty desperate, I think. You go from having 260,000 people living in the city limits of Dayton, having about 130,000 people, it doesn't take a genius to figure out you're gonna have a lot of empty buildings, a lot of empty houses, and a lot of empty storefronts. There's blocks where four of every five houses is boarded up. If you're that person living in that fifth house that is occupied, that's a pretty depressing kind of existence. With Daytonians suffering from the long decay of their city, the citizens had to ask themselves if they were ready to put their past behind them and look towards a new future for their beloved community. I hope that Dayton decides what we want our identity to be. There's a lot of uh, signs of, uh, of hope and promise uh, and energy. It's a story that's emerging. Still supported by Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, the city is slowly gaining economic traction with small businesses and new corporations popping up in and around the city, residents are seeing a revitalization in their beloved Dayton. The city is a dynamic place. It's not static. 
the Dayton community and people that have gone before us from Dayton have made and continue to make an impact on our daily lives in the 21st century. If you look back in time, look back in history, the innovations that have happened in the Dayton area that have brought us to this point are the things that have guided and maintained its course. It's really hard to convince yourself, yeah, I'm gonna move to Dayton, Ohio, but once you've lived here, it's really hard to convince yourself to leave. History cut Dayton into a place that shines with possibility, but it is up to the Daytonians of today to find their own way. Time will tell if residents of Dayton will be able to pick up the shattered pieces of the Gem City. Love of home, sublimest passion. That the human heart can know. Change the still, though fade and fashion. Rise and fall and ebb and flow. To the glory of our nation, to the welfare of our state. Let us all with veneration every effort consecrate. And our city, shall we fail her? Or desert her gracious cause? Nay, with loyalty we hail her and reveal her righteous laws. She shall forever claim our duty, for she shines the brightest gem that has ever decked with beauty, dear Ohio's diadem. <laughs>